What can we learn about our Pennsylvania ancestors through voting records? I'll tell you where to find those records and what is inside them. Welcome to Your Pennsylvania Ancestors with Denise Allen. Twenty twenty marks the anniversary of two amendments to the U.S. Constitution. It's the hundred and fiftieth anniversary of the Fifteenth Amendment, which gave the right to vote no matter the race, color, or previous designation of servitude of people in the, in America. And as I saw celebrated in many places, it's the hundredth anniversary of the Nineteenth Amendment to the Constitution which gave women the right to vote. So as you research your ancestors in Pennsylvania and anywhere in the United States, keep in mind those two amendments. The 15th Amendment was ratified in 1870 and the 19th Amendment was ratified in 1920. That's one set of clues to help find your voting records. Despite those two amendments to the federal constitution, the actual ability to register to vote, which is your first step, as we all know, in order to vote in an election, that registration is controlled by state constitutions. And Pennsylvania is no different than any other state. The first people that could uh, register to vote in this state and therefore vote in an election were people that owned land and paid taxes on that land. So those are the first people you're gonna find on voting rolls and those oldest voting records way back in the late 1700s when Pennsylvania first became a state and people first got that right to vote. Many people know about the poll taxes enacted across the Southern states. Pennsylvania never had a poll tax. It never had, let's say a quiz or a test in order to vote, but Pennsylvania required from the earliest time when it became a state that the only people that could be on the voting registration are those that paid taxes on their land. So your first people you're gonna find in voting records are men, usually, because they own the land, uh, usually white European men, because they were allowed to purchase land in Pennsylvania, and therefore they had the right to vote before anyone else. Now, voting registration lists uh, are held at the county level and registration is done through county governments. First, it was just through the county commissioners with some help from judges, and then it moved to an actual board of elections who runs the elections now in terms of voter registration and collecting ballots on election day. Those are the records you're gonna look for for voting records is at the county level, but let me tell you what exactly you're gonna find during different years, because like all records that genealogists use, what is actually in the record and collected changes according to law and changes over time. So let's cover those. Prior to 1874, there were very few requirements to register as a voter. First, obviously you gave your name where you lived within the county, and that would be represented as the township or the borough, um, and also probably gave your occupation. Uh, not always consistently, but it was often there in the records. And keep in mind that prior to 1874, voting age was considered 21 years of age or older as of the election. And also you had to be a landowner in that county and pay taxes to the county. Between 1874, which was the date of a new Pennsylvania constitution, and 1937, when there was a major change in the voter registration laws, between those years, what they collected additionally at the county level was a person's political affiliation, also if they were the actual householder or just a boarder on that property, uh, the name of their employer, and also if they were a naturalized citizen. The other requirement to vote was how long you were a resident in that voting district within the county, and that was recorded also in the voting registration records. 
During this time period, the voting age remained at 21 years old. So if you find an ancestor in those records, you know they're at least 21 or older. Now, in 1937, there was a major change made to the way voters were registered and what was required to register. Uh, Gone was the requirement of paying taxes within the county. And now there was also the ability to have absentee voting for the first time. But keep in mind, they also added these additional requirements, which are much similar uh, to what we have today than the previous records in the past. So they asked for additional details, such as the length of residence in the county, um, the former place of residence, if, you know, if it was in a previous county or a different state. They also recorded the race or color of the individual, as well as the sex. So this was a new thing within the registration. If a person was born outside of the state or in a territory, they wanted that place of birth. And if naturalized, all the details around that naturalization. They also noted if the person was a federal or a state employee. And the person actually had to sign an affidavit saying, I am the actual person that, you know, that's registering to vote. I am me. And I'm certifying that all this information is correct. In 1937 in Pennsylvania, the voting age was changed to 18 years old. Federally, the law was changed much later, but for uh, Pennsylvania, it it occurred earlier in 1937. Thinking about those three time periods as you do your voting record research can help you in finding more details on your ancestors and knowing just a little bit more about their lives. Now, if you like what you learned so far about voting records, um, please be sure to give me a rating, a review, uh, a thumbs up, and leave a comment. I'd love to hear, did you actually ever find your ancestors in voting records? Either through what I told you now, or maybe through your own research. I'd love to hear it. I, my own ancestors, I have not found in voting records. I have looked, and those records do not exist in the counties that I've looked in. But I do know through doing client work that there are voting records out there in Pennsylvania counties. Uh, and they might be way back in the storage area of the, of the courthouse, but they do exist. And, uh, and I also know some of them have been microfilmed. So I'll cover where those are uh, next. But be sure to subscribe so you don't miss my next videos on more records for your Pennsylvania ancestors. Now, if you're at home and you're looking for digitized records access uh, from your computer at home, uh, the place you're gonna find those voting records is on Family Search. Now, you're not gonna be able to type in the search box and be able to find those records. They haven't been computer indexed, meaning you know you type in the name of your ancestor and up comes a bunch of results on the screen and then you click and can see the record. Uh, you're gonna need to go into the catalog and I included links in the uh, description uh, for this episode so you can actually get access to the catalog if you haven't used it before. And you're gonna be actually paging through as if you were looking through an actual book of those voting records. So do look for those voting records though in the, the Family Search catalog. And oh, keep in mind that you're gonna see maybe a couple different things in courthouses or in those online catalogs. One is you're gonna see voting uh, registers or voting lists. Those are the two things you wanna use for your ancestors. The other thing you're gonna find is election returns. So election returns actually are, what they sound like, the actual counting of the ballots on election day. So on those records are gonna be who got the most votes or who was voted into office in county offices, uh, let's say. And if your ancestor served in that position, then you're gonna find them in the records, but that's very few people, right? So keep in mind, you know, election returns are different than voting registries and make sure that you're looking for the thing that you intend to look for as you go through these catalogs. Um, and, and if you decide to contact a county courthouse uh, for these records where they very well could be back in storage, make sure that you do it not around election time. Now, I know this sounds silly, but you know, we're right now, as this video is being released, people are still counting up ballots in Pennsylvania for the 2020 presidential election. You don't wanna contact the courthouse when they're in the middle of doing this, that all their focus is on that. You wanna contact them during a quiet time when it's not an election season. It's not a primary, it's not a general election. 
uh, that's just being considerate of our fellow citizens, our fellow public servants. So a good time to contact them might be, you know, after Thanksgiving at this point as they wind up and maybe get to grab a vacation day or two before the end of the year as don't we all need a vacation day in 2020. This is Denise Allen of PAAncestors.com and I wish you many discoveries about your Pennsylvania ancestors. Thank you.